Hey, good morning, y'all. I'm going to do a couple of things that I really don't like to do and I really don't feel like doing. But that's life the, the <laughs> and the way it is whenever you paint furniture. I've got, uh, first off, I bought this chair at the flea market over the weekend from Dean Shabby Chic, if you're here local in the Pickering Flea Market. But if you look at this chair, and I hope you can, I think you can see it. If you look at this real closely, it looks like somebody said a barrel of Crisco on it or something. I don't know what that may be. But this is a, a wood chair, and I mean, and this is good solid. This is not laminate or cheap stuff or whatever. This is a, a good chair that's been, you know tried to be refinished maybe over the years because if you can see on the bottom this little spindle that's added doesn't match it's not original but i like it okay and it's fine by me and i paid ten dollars for the chair so i'm happy but other than you know it's dirty which sometimes happens when you are buying at an outdoor flea market this is i'm gonna have to prep and a lot of times you hear people talking about and i'll work as I talk here you hear people talking about oh with these you know chalky top paints and clay paints and all that you don't have to prep well I'm here to tell you that prepping is your friend I'm using some uh, Dixie Belle white lightning which is a TSP uh, based product and put oh and I just I'm so mad at me I just put that in my brush water um, which is cold, so I'm going to have to replace that out. I had this bucket of warm water to put that in. But if you don't, uh, you know, there are some people who can get by without prepping stuff. So now I've got it in the right water. Who can get by without prepping stuff and, and look like a queen in the end. But I'm here to tell you, if it's important to you and you want it to look good, it always helps to, to do your prep. And I know from experience from trying to just paint it on there and not prep that I would have what's called bleed through on this chair from that greasy stuff if I didn't do what I'm doing now, which is uh, clean it to get all this, ouch, all this years of dirt and stuff off of it. But that's not gonna pull that grease out of there. And that grease or oil or whatever it was is gonna seep through that paint no matter what kind of paint I put on there it's uh, you need to prep so, uh, some pieces and if you look and you look at the dirt that's coming off of that if you look at some of these pieces and you see or feel like you need to uh, what do you call it sand it a little bit or something to get it smooth or if you see some of the old finish is like some areas aren't as shiny as others and things like that those are indicators that that you are going to be mad and you are going to be wasting your time if you don't prep so i'm a prep girl and it's going to happen there's much more i'm not the person who's doing this for it to look professional and get get carried away with myself because some of this uh, these spindles still have a little bit of the old shine and finish on them and apparently these are replaced there's a hole right there and I don't know what went in there if there's not a matching hole at the bottom but anyway some people would sand this whole thing and if I was wanting to put a stain on here and make this back to its original look then that's what I would go for but since I'm gonna paint it and I'm going for a rustic painted look anyway uh, I am not going to sand anything on here, but, uh, and this is a little bit rough in some areas, but that's okay if it comes off a little bit chippy, but having bleed through from this old grease or oil or whatever it is, is going to come through and ruin the red paint that I'm about to put on here. And, uh, I'm not a red fan, but, um, I've got a vision for this chair. I have, uh, here at my regular job we have a coffee shop and our coffee shop has a mascot his name is java joe and java joe is a monkey and um i'm going to stuff him uh and put him in our christmas display window to act like he's wrapping some presents up there he's going to be wearing an elf hat and such i got out several brushes we'll discuss those in a minute but i uh, so this chair is going to be for joe and I feel like it would look good in red. The window that I'm putting it across from is going to have a buffalo plaid in it. Hopefully you can still see that I'm just coming to the behind because I want to make sure and get 
all of the old dirt and residue off of here because I want my paint to stick good. Uh, anyway, so I'm thinking that I'm going to try, and we won't have time for all this today because I'm going to want the first coat to um, dry real good first before I start doing anything else to it. But um, anyway, I'm going to try to possibly put some buff see all the dirt that would have been underneath that paint there's no way the paint would have adhered well with all that on there so um, this it's it's filthy I'm gonna move this out of the way and uh, we are going to have to use and this is the point I was getting to with this uh, my hands are sticky from that TSP I should have had on gloves and I didn't But anyway, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put this all over the whole chair, but right here where I know there's gonna be bleed through, we're gonna stop that bleed through with this boss. This is also by Dixie Bell. And they call it boss because it blocks odor stains and stops bleed through. This one says clear. And I've never even used the clear. Didn't know I had it. I, I've used the white before. I'm opening a new one because the other one must be at home. And I'm just going to use a chip brush for this and get it on this seat. And then we're going to start the rest of it in the red while this is drying. I just went and pulled this off the shelf because the one I had open I couldn't find. I'm just going to use the chip brush for this. This is an old one that I've apparently used for something like this before. Hey Lisa Ann, and let's just get this on here. The TSP has dried, or the white lightning has dried, and oh this is so awkward that it's clear. It's uh, going on white, which is good, but it looks like it's going to dry pretty quickly. And this is just, if I had not done this, and I, and I know this from experience, I would be so disappointed in myself for having spent the time to um, get this thing painted and then have that come through the finish. Because what happens is, once that comes through the finish in that way, you can't just put another coat on top. Because if you put another coat of your paint on top, it's going to come through that one too. And it's going to come through the next one too. And then you get to the point to where you either have to sand all that paint off or you have to uh, put a top coat on it or a primer like this boss and put that on there and then wait for that to dry and then have wasted all that paint because you have to paint it over again. If there's there's no going back and putting enough coats of paint on there to make that work. This, because this, I told you it had a little bit of a rough texture right there because it does have that little bit of rough texture right there where some of the finish is still there and some of the finish isn't, this boss is going to help to even that out too. And it, it would help with odors. This particular one doesn't have odors, but I've bought pieces at flea markets before that have that sort of a flea market smell to them. Um, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to go get behind those spindles though. I'm lucky I came back here because it's running in a few places that I couldn't see. But I'm wanting this to be a pretty quick project. I'm not going to um, spend a tremendous amount of time on it because this is going to be for our display window. But then I will, you know, put it for sale here in the artisan market after the holiday. If anybody's in need of a buffalo flat chair. I had considered, and there's a little bit of difference between the, the two paints that, that we sell on the artisan market. We have the clay-based paint, which is the DIY paint, and it has no sealer in it, which means it's reactivated. I decided to go ahead and put some on this, just in case there's anything that would bleed through that I can't see, because this is the ends of actual boards. They look like Sorry about that, y'all. That was, do not hang up. We have important information. 
it, you know, as soon as they say do not hang up, you want to hang up. But anyway, so we're, we were talking about the difference here. And I went in there and I'm like, oh, I should use that uh, Dixie Bell paint on this chair because then I wouldn't have to seal between the coats since I know that I'm uh, going to be using three different colors, gray, black, and red. But I uh, only had one thing of the red in there. Uh, and I had the, and it wasn't open and a customer may want it, so I left it. And I have these two reds already open, so we're going to decide which one to use here. This is Marquee. Them both. And Marquee looks almost orangey barn red. And this one is Carnival red, and it looks more like a true, almost kind of a blue red. And I'm going to go with the carnival red, I think. What do y'all think? I want it to look warm, but it's going to go with the black, so maybe I do want it to look cool. We're going to go with the uh, carnival red. How about that? And whenever I do, I'm not going to try to put a perfect buffalo plaid on here either whenever I get to that part, which won't be today because I'm going to let this dry overnight because uh, that's the thing with choosing to do the... Uh, DIY paint is it will be reactivated with water so if I uh, I will have to once I get the red coat on here tonight it's adding a step for me because I'll have to come back and put a top coat I'll put something like big top or something like that on it or liquid patina to make the finish of the red not be uh, you know not have the next coat take some of that off and we're going to be doing the spindles and stuff. I guess I'm going to use this uh, number eight paint pixie. Um, and hopefully all that TSP that I put in my dang paint brush water while ago has sunk to the bottom. Um, but anyway, so I'll have to add another step to where if I was using the Dixie Bell, uh, I wouldn't have to do that. But it's, you know, I wouldn't get the same colors, and it, and this is all natural. I mean, I can lick on this chair if I wanted to because it's just, um, I think there's nine ingredients. Love being one of them, and uh, it's gonna give a good finish, and it, and it's what I, what, you know, what I wanted to work with. So that's what we're gonna do. But if I had if the Dixie Bell paint has an ac acrylic uh, base, so it's not as natural as the. Uh, DIY paint, so if that's important to you, use the DIY, which it is important to me, that uh, too, but both things are important to me, but you, uh, you know, that's the difference in selections of the paint. Both are, are awesome paints, and that's how I, you know, that's how I chose the ones that we would carry here, is based on the qualities and the reputation of the paint. And there being, there's, there's benefits, there's so many benefits to the clay base of this paint and being able to squirt it and mist it with water and, uh, and create effects that you can't create with the other paints. You may can figure a way to water distress some of those paints, but you can't do it the same way you can with this DIY paint. And even though, like I said, this is not going to be a water distress project and I'm using this because I had these paints already open. It's going to be gorgeous, and I'm going to love it, and it's going to be natural, and if eventually somebody with a child wants to buy it, you know, I'll know that, like I said, they could lick on it if they want to and be safe. This wood is very thirsty. It's absorbing a lot of this paint right now. I'm hoping that um, I have left my car at the oil change in place this morning so candy's going to bring me at lunchtime to get that so we're going to have to be at a good stopping point before lunchtime um as i think she's not coming back for the day she's not feeling too well so we're going to be slinging some paint as fast as we can sling some paint to get this on here and again since it's the first coat as long as there's not something like a run on here we're good and that's a, a really good thing about both of those lines of paints. Okay, I'm gonna go to the back of that. I mean, it is sucking it up. It is, uh, it's drying so fast. And that's another really good thing is you don't have to be delayed waiting on paint to dry 
on these, especially this clay-based paint. It, it dries so fast. Now, it dries to the touch. Let me put it that way. It dries to the touch. I wouldn't want to go ahead and put my uh, top coat on here within the first couple hours, even though it's going to feel dry to the touch. There still could be some moisture in the clay that would trap underneath there and possibly mess with my finish a little bit. And um, definitely don't like to, you know, put my effort into the work here, even though you can see this is not a lot of effort. Uh, this goes pretty quick. And this is, I should have took a dang before picture. I can't do it now because my phone is recording. Um, if anybody can get a screenshot of this and send to me, that would be great. Of <laughs> what this looks like part way through. Uh, it, you transform. I mean, that's just, that's the, the, as Sonia Miller of Junk Monkey would say, that's the power of paint. You can transform anything within just a few minutes to something new and fresh. And if we decide we don't like this red or we want to change the color of this chair to green for St. Patrick's Day, grab your paint and do it. That's, it's not a, it's not permanent. It's so nice to be able to refresh things anytime you want to. Just get a total new look. My husband is at home today. Uh, he hates to paint, by the way, so I'm so thankful for him. If you know him, tell him so. Um, he's painting the walls and the trim with the Sherwin-Williams paint of the spare room for all that furniture. If y'all watched me redo uh, all the furniture pieces for that room, hopefully they'll go back in there today. But I have to stop and get more paint on the way home. We bought the their top-of-the-line paint, but it wasn't enough to cover the hunter green that was in there. Um, and I'm going to have to stop and get another gallon for him to put a second coat in. Uh, do the cutting in with. I always cut in first and then paint, but he paints and then cuts in. So as long as he's doing the work, I shall not tell him how to do it. Isn't that right? <laughs> I try to tell my daughter that and we're both a lot alike. We want things done right, but by golly, if your husband's loading the dishwasher or doing something for you, don't ever, ever criticize that because they may stop. I am. Can I, but I can help you. That's okay. That's okay. It doesn't matter at all. Everybody's happy to see everybody. You're behind the chair too. <laughs> but, but yes, I am. I'm doing a live on the uh, Sisterhood of the Traveling Brush page and I found this chair at the flea market and uh, I want to use it uh, in our window display for Christmas. So, right now the red's going on, but uh, hopefully by this time tomorrow it will be becoming Buffalo Check. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, well, I'm sorry about that. Oh, okay. Well, I can answer you with you in there and me right here. Nobody minds. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm here. I, I will uh, possibly be doing this again, but uh, just depends on what time you know what time you catch me. But um, like I said, I'd be glad to answer any questions at any time because a lot of times you may not you know think about it, but somebody else who's watching may have the same question as you, and that way, whenever we answer it, it helps more than one person. the stone that I have somebody asking me that she has a nightstand and it has the center of the top has the stone in it um, you can take the stone out and replace it with wood if you wanted but it's still not going to look the same as you know the rest of the unit but the, especially uh, with either the Dixie veil or the DIY paint you can uh, you can paint right over it but, and that's part of like what we're talking about today is I was doing some prep work on this. I've put um, what's called boss 
to uh, bleed through on that top, but with the tile, what I would do is something called slick stick, and that helps the paint to adhere to slick surfaces. So at least over that tile, I would put the slick stick, which is like a primer, to help the, because it's probably a glazed tile, uh, and I would put the slick stick on there, probably a couple of coats of it, and uh, that would um, help the paint to adhere to the tile, and it, and you know people p paint their tile floors. Even. I mean, it's crazy that the stuff that you can really paint and change the look of. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that'll look really nice. That'll look really, really nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, black and white would look would look really good, and the uh, the primer comes in a clear or a white, but it you know it really wouldn't matter if you're going to go over it with black. So you know what I mean. Either either one would work. But yeah, that uh, that makes it stick to the slick surfaces, and it's that's part of what I'm discussing on this video today too, is prep work, and with a lot of these. Uh, paints you know their claim to fame is they don't have to be uh primed and all that but if you've got a slick surface or if you've got something that'll bleed through which is what i had today the prep is is the answer to not having frustration later on um if you're looking for the one that i'm live on now where i do the furniture paint and all that it's at art by terry stoball Mm, that's on Facebook at Art by Terry Stovall. Yeah, okay. That's gonna be just where it's on Oh, well, you could put at art the at sign Art by Terry Stovall, or the name of the business is Sisterhood of the Traveling Brush. Sometimes it comes up like that, and sometimes it doesn't. And the name of this uh, business is uh, Artisan Market at Get Healthy, and I don't do as. Uh, many lives on the artisan market page as I do on the sisterhood page and I can always answer questions on there you can mes message them to me or whatever and I'm happy to do that too on any of the pages yep that's it that what you're seeing right there at the top is this piece right here before I put the darker finish on it. So definitely that's it. <laughs> Yeah, you definitely, you know, if y'all got some other primer already, look at it and make sure it can go on, you know, tile and stuff like that. And if you can, any any primer will do. There, I'm familiar with these and what properties that they'll do, but uh, yeah. Yeah, well that's the good thing about these products or they're not gonna have a strong smell and be something that you're worried about being, you know, trapped inside a building painting them because they're, uh, you know, either low VOC or no VOC to where it's not gonna put any, you know, organic compounds and stuff in the air that you shouldn't breathe. But I'm here most days, uh, Monday through Thursday, like 9.30 to uh, 3 or something like that. I usually go to lunch 12 to 1. And uh, I will, as many hours as I can, be in this room right here painting. <laughs> okay, well, I'll come pick your brain. Okay, sure. Or you can message me on the page and I'll help any way I can. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Have a good day. You too. Some of the, this is what's called quarter sewn oak, actually, that part of these uh, legs are made out of, which is good wood, and some people would be like, oh no, don't paint that. Well, if it's gonna sit in a flea market, otherwise, how about we paint it red and use it for something? That's what I say. My husband's a woodworker, so he loves wood, and not so much painted wood, but, uh, 
you know, so there's some things where I respect the beauty of the wood and I wouldn't paint it, but this is an old chair and it needed some love and I'm giving it. Giving the spreading love. It's not going to stick as well on this black piece as it did the rest of it, but that's okay because it's going to have another coat anyways. Plenty of other stuff going on it. Can't let the little thing stress you out. Try to tilt this up to make sure I can get the underneath of this. And hopefully the lady was here. She was a little camera shy, but hopefully that helped somebody else too in thinking about whether or not to paint tile because her nightstand had, you know, that tile top on it and she's wanting to paint the piece white and the tile black. And I'll say hit it with some slick stick and go for it. I'm going to show you something else in just a second. Let me get this on here. Make sure I'm getting it on. Um, inside these legs, can you see that? Well, inside these legs, somebody wrote with a Sharpie and F. And I'm guessing that's when they took it apart to put this black thing in the middle. They wanted to make sure they got the front legs back on the front. I hope that, and we will see, I hope that that doesn't bleed through um, because I'm already painting on that and we will find out if it does. I'll have to um, go over this with a top coat to seal this DIY paint and then go back with a coat of the boss to keep that from bleeding through and then come back over that with another coat of the paint. Because you don't want a big black F showing back up through later on. I can still see it a little bit through there, but that's also, you know, the first coat of the red paint going over black. That's a little bit damp where I just put my hand. But I need to get out of here at 12 o'clock today and that seat's going to be red. Isn't it amazing how the whole look of a piece changes in just a few minutes time. That, that will never cease to amaze me. There's still a little bit of white here in the middle and I'll put it on thicker right there. Uh, I'm gonna do around these edges first and see if that'll make a difference. I may grab that blow dryer and dry that a little, but I'm gonna keep painting what I can paint as long as I can because this is no longer white, so I know it has already dried to clear, which is an amazing part of using something that uh, goes on white and dries to clear. I'm not gonna do the underneath of this chair. I don't see a need in it. Some people do, some people don't. Uh, major furniture companies don't, so if don't is good enough for them, don't is good enough for me. I'm gonna go ahead and get behind these spindles. This is all dry back here. Behind and in between. If you're watching, I appreciate any hearts and shares. That helps Facebook to show my uh, videos to more people, which is called increasing my reach. And that's something I can't do by myself. That's something that y'all help me with. And I'm very appreciative of that. I don't know if this blow dryer is going to reach over there. What to do, what to do, what to do. Um, needs to be dried. We're gonna have to see. Yeah, 
and this is not going to reach. Get on, on up here. Hey, this might just reach. This is a really long cord on this uh, multi strip. See if we can make the magic happen. Woohoo! Where there's a will, there's a way. It's turning clear already. I'd like to get y'all's opinion on this. Since I told you a minute this is going to be uh, like the buffalo plaid. Should I just do the seat in the buffalo plaid and not try to make that go all the way around? And then I could do like, uh, say, every other spindle in black. Do this thing under here in black and leave the rest of it in red. Or should I try to do the buffalo plaid pattern all over the whole dang chair? I'm kind of thinking, you know, the seat is a good flat surface and I can tie the black and the gray and the red in together with um, doing the fingers. I don't want it to be, I mean, I want it to be busy, you know what I mean? I want it to be the flat all over for it to be a uh, conversation piece. But I don't want it to look ridiculous and spend a hundred thousand hours trying to figure out how to get little squares around these fingers. We do have to respect my time and effort there a little bit too. Okay, thanks to the use of my $9 blow dryer, we are now ready to proceed. Good morning. Morning. It's a lot darker when it's wet than when it's dry. Can you see the difference on that? But it's going to dry lighter and so if you are painting with this kind of paint and you're thinking oh no you know at this point i would be thinking oh no had i not been experienced with it it's going to dry all the same but when you put the wax on it or the top coat on it it's going to bring it back to this original dark color and that will be the color that it will remain right now that's just the clay and the chalk and things like that that are in it that are drying and making it look a little bit lighter a little bit of water on my brush i don't want to get it too wet because i'm in the last of getting it done here But because the seat will be hopefully eventually used a lot, I know I'm going to put a second coat on here and I'll probably put, um, say, two coats of top coat eventually on the legs and the areas that you don't use very much. But on the, on the, I'm spraying a little bit of water on there because it is just soaking it up. Uh, on the areas like people would grab it by up here, I'll probably uh, at least double my top coat there. And on the seat, I'll at least triple the top coat because especially during, you know, in the center part, it'll be used a lot. But down here on the legs, that's hardly gonna get any use. Um, this is not far enough up for people to put their feet on and things like that. So that'll just get one coat on it. Probably because this seat was warmed up with that blow dryer, it is just dragging. So I'm wanting more water in there because you don't want to feel it pulling and feel it dragging. You want your brush to glide over the paint. Wanting to get this front surface that you slide in into the chair. There will be a lot of friction that goes on those areas where the legs go. I want to make sure and get the real good first coat on there and then I'll get a real good second coat on there. Because you wouldn't want anybody to be disappointed later on because it doesn't last. Put a little extra right there on the edges. Okay, so that's the end of game one. 
the Carnival DIY Red. We used uh, Dixie Bell White Lightning TSP to clean this chair, which was filthy. Um, I got it at the at an outdoor flea market, and then just on the seat part because it had an oily residue on there that would have come up through this paint, and no matter how many coats of this paint I put on there, it would have continued to soak through that. So we had to put a stop to it, and I did that with the Dixie Bell Boss, uh, which is like a primer that blocks odor, stains, and stops bleed through. So it's specifically for that, and then. The DIY clay based paint and the thing about this too is once this cures which takes about 30 days it's going to be dry to touch within just a few minutes and it'll be you know have the other coats on it and all that and, and ready to use in a couple of weeks as far as sitting on but you don't want to just put it out there for somebody to sit on tomorrow I mean even though it's looks dry it's still gonna a little bit damage the you know the paint that you put on there but after 30 days I mean this is gonna be like Adobe you know what I mean this is gonna be hard uh, clay on the outside of here so that's going to be a really nice uh, benefit to this chair once that's all done and since it's going in our um, Christmas display window by the time it in Java Joe this stuffed monkey doesn't weigh anything by the time it comes out of there the 30 day cure time will be up so I can set it out here on the floor and people can sit on it all they want to but anyway I hope if you have any questions please let me know if you uh, I would love for someone to tell me their opinion. Should I just buffalo plaid just the seat? Or, or should I do the buffalo plaid on the seat and do like a red spindle, a black spindle, a gray spindle? And do those different and then this one black or just black and red? Give me your opinions on that. And if not, I'll do what, <laughs> what I want to do. But, uh, and see how it goes and do the seat first and then decide what to do. But um, I appreciate you joining me, and I hope you join me some more. I'm going to turn this around and show you one more thing. Let me move some of my paint out of the way, or I can show you as I'm doing that. I have no idea what this thing is right here. I bought it at a uh, flea market for $5. This is that nasty stuff where I cleaned the chair. Um, I bought this at the flea market for five dollars. I have no idea what to do with it. I'm only guessing at this point because I just can't figure out what it is. It, it could be a giant jewelry box, I suppose, but I think it probably was something that was in the center of an old timey. Uh, see if I can tilt this down any. An old timey vanity top thing, but it has these two drawers underneath there. I found one of those pins, like from the 70s, that had a red, a green, a blue and a black I think it was on there but anyway I'm gonna paint this thing too but it's it's filthy it'll have to be clean I've got this airing out because it did smell a little bit like a flea market while I have the TSP in here or, or the lightning which is white lightning I'm gonna go ahead and, and give it a sorry about that I had another phone call but anyway so I'm, we don't we don't paint this I don't know what color if y'all have suggestions of what to do with this I would appreciate them if not I'm just gonna go with what color paint is sitting out whenever I get to it sorry about that I'm gonna have to go now because that was another phone call we'll see how this goes and I appreciate you watching thanks bye